Well, Caesar said that the bravest are the bell gay guys, and today we're going to be testing it out. Can we be the brave bell gay as well? Here in the north, as Eberonia, we're going to start. We're going to try and form bell gay if we can. Eberonian culture is pretty good. Heavy infantry, 10%. Light infantry, 20 So it's pretty decent. But bell gay heritage, 5% discipline just from the heritage, but plus two um, retreat delay. So... It's going to be interesting, but let's get into it. Honestly, the starting omens I'm pretty happy with. I don't like this one, but apart from that, we're going to go for the national tax for now. We will change that when we get a bit more stability. Let's go for our idea slots. We're only a level two nation, guys, so we are going to go for only two. Morale of armies and oratory. I think we're going to go for the monthly corruption as well. We are, of course, going to try and centralize as quick as possible. But before we do, we're going to encourage syncretism as well because that's going to give us unintegrated culture group happiness plus 12% which is pretty insane. In terms of our culture, guys, you can see we are Eberonian. So we are slightly separate from the Celtic group. We are kind of our own group out here in Belgia, which is pretty good. Um, but there are a few cultures around us that are quite large as well. Most notably Nervian, which we might want to integrate at some point. But it shouldn't be too hard to get them into our culture because, as you can see, we are pretty much all druidic around here, which is very nice. In terms of our imports, guys, we're going to get two livestock for that pop promotion speed so that hopefully we can get a few more citizens in the realm before we become a kingdom. Unfortunately for us, there are no cities in this vicinity at all. So that's going to be a very, very important part of this uh, campaign is building a few cities. So here we go. Our mission, bravest of the Gauls. In the northern region of Gaul, far from the soft civilized lands of the Mediterranean. <laughs> Live the fierce Belgae. They are surrounded by enemy tribes, the dreaded Germans to the east, often cost the cross the Renus River to attack the Rhine, of course. And the Gauls to the west are no friends of the Belgae, but rivals for power. As wars of unification spread throughout the south with kings and generals, that's a YouTube channel, struggling as they hope to piece together a sundered empire, so too do the Belgians fight to create their nation. I mean, Belgians, Belgians, whatever. Only time will tell who can claim to be the bravest of the Gauls. I mean, I'm saying that in a Latin way, but we're going to start this mission my friends and we can go for the southern strategy and we can send an ultimatum to every highlighted country to either accept our supremacy or face war or we can just get some claims oh that is an ultimatum as well i think we go for the southern one because that is two nations there straight away i like this mission tree because it basically just forces you to declare war we're also going to raise our levies in six months or so because this is going to take Okay, no, it doesn't take long. We're going to raise our levies just in case. Ten pops to start with as a levy as well. It's pretty darn good. <laughs> well, here we go. Lugatorix Brennus has widely decided to press against our weaker neighbors to the south. Already our envoys have left Harenatium, yet they bear no gifts. They are unweighted by furs and bring no talks of silver or gold. There will be no diplomatic frills, only the delivery of of our ultimatum let's go while we're doing that we can also just do the same one at the top but let's wait the 10 days because we don't want to be embroiled in two wars right at the start really quickly well okay one of the nations decided to become our tribal vassal and the other one has declared war on us that is actually good with this mission tree by the way guys if we go to our nation overview and we unite belgium you can see in there any subject that, it, that it is in these provinces will be annexed. So if we had, say, uh, if we have all of these as subjects, we will annex them as well. Well, there goes their fort. Let's just take this last bit of land and then we will have uh, fully annexed them, which is pretty darn good. Let's make some bacon as well. There we go, guys. Our first war done and dusted. We are going to imprison and try and sell into slavery because we have no uh, tyranny at the moment whatsoever. So as you can see, guys, we have all of these characters imprisoned. So we can um, do the oopsies with them and get a load of money from this. We do get tyranny, of course. But uh, I think it's worth it, guys. Tyranny's not that bad, really, is it? <laughs> well, there we go. They've all been oopsied. And now we have 220 gold, which is pretty nice. And the good thing for us, all of this land was still Eberonian as well, which is 
pretty good. On to the next one, guys. We're going to go for Manapia. They will likely declare war on us. I've got to say they're big enough to uh, think that they're hard enough, but um, they're not going to be hard enough, I promise you. Well, here we go, guys. Another 10 days to wait for this answer, so let's go. And they have become a tribal vassal. That has actually cancelled their previous war, which is um, pretty good for us. The only annoying thing about this is the fact that... Um, we need 20 political influence every single time to get these guys to do these. And it takes so long to get political influence as a tribal guy. Minus 0.25 for being a tribal chief. Oh, we're never going to be able to change our laws, man. We're never going to be able to. Well, on to the next one, guys. We can either go for Marinia over here. These guys or Nervia. I think because Nervia is the biggest one, it's going to take us the longest. So we've got more time to build up some more political influence. Let's go for that one. We're obviously going to raise our levies ready to go as well because, yeah, this is most likely going to be a war with such a big nation. And, well, there's no war. Come on. We're literally getting them all, man. <laughs> I got my guys ready and everything. I, I could have sworn this was going to be a war. When I did this on my own, I didn't done this for fun, by the way, guys. Um, like, conquered all of Gaul. And, like... Nearly everyone went to war, so hopefully there's going to be a few more wars. Surely Treveria will decide that there's a war, but I don't know. <laughs> the only thing with this, like, sort of mission tree, guys, is if they don't declare war on you, you pretty much just sit here doing nothing until you get 20 influence again, which is another 20 months, because even with scheming for influence... Yeah, we are, you know, not getting much influence at all. <laughs> right, well, let's go for the next one. I don't think they're going to declare war, so uh, let's go. And they didn't declare war. <laughs> Just getting all this land for free. This is great. <laughs> oh, and finally, we get some political influence in an event. I've been waiting for this for so long. <laughs> now we can do this one. Great. And who'd guessed it, guys? They, they didn't declare war. I think if you take, like, the ones early... Um, as vassals, like, no one else wants to declare war on you because of your power. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this mission, we can actually just, like, seize. Um, seize Kortakarayalurkum. Or we can get the rest of Belgia. I think we're going to go for that. Surely someone's going to be hard enough to declare war on us. Come on. You know you can do it, guys. You know you can do it. Oh, and finally someone has declared war on us. I mean... I... I... <laughs> This tiny nation, brother. <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, fair play, respect, all these bigger nations, complete pussios. You guys with your two provinces, fair play. I respect that. I respect that. Well, one of our missions here, guys, if we have 20 ships, we can actually gain a city pretty much just for 80 gold and 25 political influence. I think that's pretty good, so... We are going to build some ships, but we we only have one port at the minute, so it's it's going to take a little while. <laughs> i got to say, though, I do quite like this mission tree. It feels kind of... I know, obviously, the time scale is quite quick, but it feels kind of more realistic. You know, you're gathering these tribes together rather than, you know, going on some mad dash uh, and just conquering everything in your sights. It kind of feels like it probably would have been at the time, you know, a bit of diplomacy, a bit of conquest, all that sort of thing. Well, I think we're going to make them a tributary as well, because for some reason we can't take both of these provinces. So, uh, yeah, we're going to take them as a tributary. So, another vassal. <laughs> right, well, let's take this city off of Manapia. That should be quite funny. Let's go. Oh, I love this mission. I love this mission. Our ruler must use the character interaction, make rival on a leader of an enemy country and challenge them to a duel. So our guy's got seven marshals. So we need to find someone with not much marshal. I think a lot of people around here will have good marshals seen as, you know, uh, that is how you become a tribal leader, really, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. So, uh, nine, come on. Anyone with low marshal. All of these guys have got mad marshal. Come on, man. Uh, well, this guy actually uh, doesn't have a good marshal, so we're going to challenge him to a duel as well. Let's go. And let's fight him in person. Let's go. And I think um, we'll use an axe to cleave Ayakus to death. Let's go. Um, well, it's, it's not 
going too well. Um, we could become maimed. We're going to become maimed either way. So we're going to fight on. And honestly, I don't want this guy to die. So he's going to take the coward's way out and surrender. <laughs> Well, we now have Kortau Rayakum over here, which is now our capital for some reason, even though it's not connected to any more of our lands. It's not a city, is it? No, it's just still a settlement. So, yeah, we can also do the bravest are the Belgae here as well. The Belgae, uh, which is pretty good. Gives him loads of popularity and stats. Would like to do this to someone who's young. He's only 37, so I think that's a very good opportunity let's go for that and look at that guys we can already unite belgia which is going to annex everyone in there as well so um yeah let's do that we're also going to become a federated tribe which is okay don't mind that at all and we are of course going to start trying to make a little bit more centralization happen now let's uh, change around our things we're going to stick with the, the morale of armies and then we're going to go for hmm i think we're going to go for the slave output and then when we get the influence we will probably go for the corruption as well instantly now though guys you can see we have a few different issues we've got about a million forts in our land so i will clean that up in a second Eberonian is the main culture, but Nervian, Marinian are very large as well. I don't think we're going to integrate anyone, though, in Belgia itself, because we can convert them rather quickly. They're all our religion. So uh, if we have a look at one of these uh, provinces, for example, say uh, this one with our capital. Um, let's have a look at the uh, conversion. 0.09%, which is... Um, not amazing. <laughs> so we're going to have to switch all these guys around to uh, cultural assimilation. And there we go. That's going to help a lot. Well, here we go. We can make the city of the Eberones. Traveller, have you heard of Fair Kortori I come? The capital city erected by the pious Eberones in the north. One could wander throughout the entirety of Gaul before finding another city like it. Many believe the Eberones to be capable of only waging war, but the growth of their city proves otherwise. So let's get that city for pretty cheap. Let's go. And now we've got 20 ships, guys, which... Believe me, we're going to be deleting most of them in a second as soon as we've done that. We are going to get commerce value for Castra Vetera. I believe that is random. Castra Vetera. Well, anyway. Oh, it's this one over here. That's pretty good. And there we go. Our first city. Very nice indeed, guys. That allows us then to get uh, Guaunenta as a city as well. So let's uh, delete all of these guys. We don't need them anymore. I've got to say, although there's not been that much war, I do really enjoy this mission tree. It's it's kind of interesting. There's a lot to do on it after the first little bit of, of war or non-war, if it is. <laughs> if it is that. And if you're wondering why we're not waging war on anyone else, guys, our political influence is a uh, big problem as uh, we get that city there as well. Two cities right next to each other. Very nice. In an area that had no cities before, a lot of these need political influence, so I'm just, like, saving it up for these to do these. But we need money now, so I think we are going to start to wage some war once we get a bit of political influence, which is still a big struggle. <laughs> Ooh, and lots of political influence. That's what we need. I know it's at the expense of uh, stability, guys, but, um, yeah, we, we really do need that. <laughs> we really, really do need that. Well, now we need some money, so uh, we are going to go to war. Uh, that's that's one way to make a lot of money, isn't it, guys? And we don't have any allies. I think we can do this all on our own. Like, you know, don't think we really need allies in this uh, in this game so far. Maybe until we get to Rome. <laughs> so, in terms of the forts, guys, as well, I have basically deleted all the inland forts apart from this one because it covers this, I believe, unless that goes to there. I, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, uh, we are basically covering off everyone over here this guy has the same color as us i don't like that i really don't like that <laughs> uh, but yeah we're basically covering off all of the edge of our lands at the moment at the moment and now that we have a little bit of stability and a bit of an excess of influence let's go for the coin minting initiative that's gonna catapult our centralization up quite a bit because remember like i say we want to become a monarchy at some point man we, we have failed on 42 percent about five times in a row come on man Come on! 
like so many times. Watch them. They've got this. We were we were on 42% when they were on zero. And they have beaten us. You are joking me. And now we're starving. What? What is this? Like, that has got to be bollocks. That cannot be 42%. Jesus, man. Jesus. Well, let's test our metal in battle then, boys. The bravest of the bell guy. And we are the weakest as well, apparently. Run. <laughs> run, men. Run. God. We got absolutely ruined there. Oh, dear. Well, there we go. Let's, uh, we've got our morale back and uh, most of our manpower. So let's go for this small guy. And if he runs away, we're going to go for the 6K. Says it's pretty even. So let's see what we do this time. We might lose again. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. Well, here we go. This is getting very close. Very close. It's all dependent on the rolls. But looks like we are, we are the wrong. Oh, we've got bottleneck. Ah, come on, man. <laughs> come on, this is close. I think we need to get a we need to get a mercenary here. All right, now we have a larger army than them. I think we just go sit on this fort and yeah, maybe try and fight them again at a couple of places. Hmm. It depends. I think uh, if we can just catch that smaller army, we're going to be doing very well. But here we go. Looks like we're going to take this fight. So let's see what we do this time. Okay, we're going to win this time. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, finally. That is very good. And he's coming to fight us. Oh my god. And he got absolutely savaged by the mercs. Come on, the boys. We're still making money, even with the mercs and the levies. So, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're quite happy. This this place only has 200 garrisons. So, if they get close to taking that, we might have to go for the assault. And there we go. That is the, uh, the first siege won. Shall we go for that? Hmm. He also has 12 martial ability compared to our uh, 9. That is a bit of an issue. I think we've got to just risk this here. There we go. We've forced him off it. That is good. And then we're going to have to rush back here to stop them uh, taking uh, taking this army out. Come on, men. Hold out. Oh, no. They didn't hold out. <laughs> Let's fight them anyway. Damn. Just as I, just as I joined the battle, one of their... Uh, one of their guys just came out of nowhere. So, yeah, we might be... Uh, peace might be forced pretty soon <laughs> unless we get our act together. But we can get a uh, tradition. I think we're going to go for the Celtic ones. Let's go for the siege ability. That's going to really, really help. Well, here we go. Another battle. <laughs> this is getting <laughs> kind of ridiculous. No one's really winning. Okay, they, they kind of... Uh, left the battle. They're going to come back in, but we should still win. <laughs> there we go, boys. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Oof, we killed a lot of men there. Let's hope we can take this now. Please, please, let us take it. And while the war's going on, what I'm going to do is get all of this onto cultural assimilation. That is going to really help us get to the next culture. This is really going to help us uh, assimilate all these cultures, as you can see. Uh, and get them to our culture. So we will have more levies as well, guys, which... Yeah, who doesn't like a few more levies? Well, there goes the next siege, so we shouldn't be enforced upon a white piece anymore. So, uh, yeah, let's go for uh, Belginum over here. And then that should be the war over, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, we want to take all of this land, of course, remember? So that should be good. Although, there's this area here. Yeah, I just don't think we want to drag this out much longer. It's been... A bit too long already, hasn't it, my friends? <laughs> a little bit too messy and too long already. Right, let's let's get out of this war. That was a mess. That was so, so bad. Gonna banish them because I don't want as much, um, you know, uh, aggressive expansion. But, jeez, that was, that was a terrible, terrible war for me. <laughs> well, all that about no alliances, guys. Um, that, was, that was a joke. <laughs> Just a little joke you know <laughs> well, let's go for the next war we do need a little bit of cash hopefully this isn't going to be quite as annoying and pictonia can give us a hand they might want to take some land here as well but honestly i don't mind too much it's fine and luckily their armies are just focusing on our ally <laughs> great well that's the first siege down that has brought a huge swathe of territory into our control I'm honestly thinking about taking all of this. <laughs> Aggressive expansion be damned, my friends. We need the pops. We need the money. Let's go. 
And the reason why I do want to take all of this land here is because Alesia here as well. And uh, Bibracte. Sorry, not Alesia. Avaricum. Uh, and Bibracte. Alesia's over there. Uh, are both cities. So is Alesia actually as well. So, uh, yeah, that will be quite nice to, uh, to take that. We do have all these tribal vassals still. I don't really know what to do with them. Like, we can't integrate them. They didn't get integrated. The only lands that got integrated were the ones that are in Belgia, not the ones outside it. So we might have to just release them and uh, conquer them ourselves. However, if we do form um, Ghoul at some point, I believe they will get integrated as well. Oh, no, I don't think they do. I don't think they do. So, ah, well. Right, on to the, uh, the, final, the final fort, guys, and then this war will be done, and we'll have taken a big swathe out of Biturgia. I'm not going to give any land to Pictone yet, of course, uh, because we want that land, don't we? <laughs> well, seeing as one of our missions requires us to build a city, let's go um, non shall hide. We need that money. We really do need that money. Well, a, a victory without even fighting a single battle. Can't complain about that at all. I think that is the extent of what we have conquered. So uh, let's take that. There we go. We're going to become a major power as well. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. I think, yeah, it is time to get rid of these tribal vassals. Like, we, we, we don't really need them. Um, and we'll just take the land ourselves later down the line. And this is actually a city up here too. So we've actually taken three cities in that war, which is pretty darn good. <laughs> nice. So we actually have quite a lot of cities now. We've got three, four, five cities, which is basically what the whole rest of Gaul has. So um, uh, we're pretty advanced, boys. We're pretty advanced. <laughs> oh, finally, we can make Herentia, Herenatium into a city. Oh, finally. Now we just need to save up enough money to uh, build a fort in our capital, which is a bit annoying, honestly. <laughs> I'd prefer not to not to have to build a fort there, because I don't want a fort there. Um, in terms of this mission, getting two honey uh, in this uh, province over here, there are no import routes for honey at the moment. So, bit of a shame, bit of a shame, to be honest. Well, I think now we've got to chill until our aggressive expansion picks off. I'd love to dive into these guys, but unfortunately... Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big alliance there, guys. That'll be very hard to fight, even for us. We need to get some of our pops converted. Um, so, yeah, we are getting some converted in quite a few of these provinces so that we can, uh, of course, get uh, bigger levies. However, hmm, we don't have that many citizens as well. It may be worth getting uh, some of these guys as citizens, but... Honestly, it's so quick to convert them that I don't really want to mess around with it too much. But Treverian might be a good answer. Let's have a look at Treverian. Where is Treverian? It's over here. It's quite a big group. Is it as big as some of these other ones, though? Like, that one's massive. Like, we'd want to convert that one rather than anything else, I think. And I am just going to disband my fleet. We, we don't need these guys. We don't need them. Well, let's go for another centralization. Although we could do this. Hmm. I think we go for syncretism just to make everyone happy in the nation. It's going to slow down centralization. But don't worry, guys. Once we get our stability back up, we are going to go for absolute authority over here as well. Whoa! 13% research efficiency. 1.8 monthly research points. That is insane, boys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so painful. <laughs> we are trading with Rome, though, trying to get those good events that give us a little bit of extra um, uh, extra research points, but <laughs> it's difficult. And look what I've just noticed, guys. That, like, literally, just as I said, like, was about to say that Rome just got full annexed by Tuskia. Yeah, Etruria is on a rampage on this run, it would seem. They even have Epirus, too. And oh my days. The Seleucids look like the only Diadoc that uh, is doing well. Are you guys okay over here? Like, what is this? Oh, it's the Thracian Revolt. Okay, that makes more sense, but this is, this is horrible. 
This is horrible. Seleucids, go and have some fun, my friends. <laughs> Mop them all up. Oh, well, Ptolemy's still doing well. But they always do all right. And finally, we built a fort in our capital. That's going to allow us to do Barbarian Wisdom. Local research points for plus 5%. And migration attraction is actually good. But the research points, honestly, at the minute, <laughs> it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's get on with doing this one. And then we'll have basically finished the, uh, the mission tree for Belgia. Oh my god, guys. We can afford an invention. Oh my days. That is insane. <laughs> Let's go. Invention time. Honestly, I, I don't think taking a single military invention would be a good idea. I, I'm, I'm considering going down towards gradual tax, gradual economic integration to get grand theatres. But that's such a civilized play. So maybe, yeah, maybe later. Yeah, let's let's go for military. <laughs> oh, and finally, we can do uh, Haranatium on the Renus. This is going to give us uh, uh, citizen happiness, tribesman happiness, and population growth, which is actually pretty good. Population growth is good. And then we can do the future of the Belgae. Adds four tribesmen pops with state culture and religion. And uh, Kortoriae come becomes the capital of belgia we already uh have that so uh that's fine oh dear 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 me so um there's been a plot guys <laughs> and uh looks like there's gonna be an assassination attempt against us and it's killed us and rups Kulkus the fox becomes the new ruler and we become an autocratic monarchy honestly this is good there is a civil war which isn't good but this is good. That, pause, pause, pause. This guy has 17 Marshall. That is the man we need. That is the man we need. So he is the uh, the king, of course. And that is his wife there. Very nice. How old are you, sir? How old? 49. Okay. Hopefully you last for a long time. Uh, hopefully you last for a long time with that 17 Marshall. And unfortunately, we don't have many, 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 many men. Um, and the... Uh, War is only in the north, though. That is one very good thing. So we need to be very quick about this. And we've got to redo literally everything as well. <laughs> and that means we now have to change all of this back again, which, yeah, a little bit annoying, but oh well. It's worth it. It's worth it but for becoming an autocratic monarchy already. How is our tech looking? 8% though now. I mean, it's still not, it's, it's not great, is it? <laughs> Here we go. There's a battle. They do outnumber us, but I'm hoping... Okay, yeah, we're, we're going to get screwed there. We're going to get screwed. Where's all our morale? I have turned the army maintenance back up. Maybe let's go up a little bit higher. And uh, yeah, that's going to give us a little bit more morale. Well, here we go. Here is a proper battle. Oh my god, and we're absolutely ruining them. Let's go, boys. Very nice indeed. I, I haven't messed around with the army at all, really. So uh, yeah, now we just need to take all of this land, including the fort. We do have different ideas now, though. So, um, yeah. Do we want ruler popularity? Probably we'll get ruler popularity. We'll also get monthly corruption. And then when we get some more, we'll get, of course, morale of armies. Here we go. Is this going to be the final battle? No, they're still surviving somewhat. I don't know how they're surviving. Hopefully we can destroy them this time. We literally just don't have the discipline to properly kill them. Watch this. Like, look how few men will kill in this battle. And completely proved me wrong there, guys. We actually killed them all, finally. So that is the uh, the Civil War over. But we have one brewing already. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, there we go. Finally finishing this mission tree. The Renus shall not stop us. Roops Kulkus the Fox. Upon hearing the news that, our, news that our claims against the Frisians to our north has been completed, wasting no time in assembling his levy. The call for the soldiers to assemble near Kortauriacum went out the same morning. While there are some voices within Belgia that are calling for restraint, arguing that a full-blown invasion across the river Renus is an unnecessary burden to our nation, Rups has refused to listen. The king has saw, sworn a blood oath of vengeance. <laughs> yeah, with his 17 marshal, he can do what he wants, man. Just leave him alone. Let him, let him do what he wants. <laughs> we just need to... Um, I'm going to disband them all to get the experience because we are going to be able to do this. Spearman defense. 
is okay. Forest combat bonus, though. Everything is a forest around here. So, um, yeah, that's that's quite good. And now we've got claims up here in Frisia, which will be quite nice to take. So, uh, yeah, that'll be cool. And look at that now, guys. 3.2 monthly research, 18% research efficiency. That is pretty darn good. We're going to go for active drill to get that discipline. And then I think we'll look at maybe getting some civic um, advances and oratory and religious as well, of course. Um, religious, probably to get some unintegrated culture happiness. Although, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so that is 3% happiness over there, which is pretty good. Well, let's uh, finish these missions off the bravest of the goals. Belgium gains two free province, inv province, province investments, if I can speak. Two citizen pops and two freeman pops. So that is good. That's going to help us out. We can go for the Pearl of Belgica. Belgica is our home as well as the center of our country. We must grow the economy of our home region. Or we could go for Amorica until the entire region of Amorica is under our control. Let's just have a look at the region map mode so that is there um i mean the bravest of the belge so uh yeah we don't need to build up our nation do we guys <laughs> we don't need to do that let's consult the court and we've actually lost quite a few um a few pops from our army unfortunately due to the civil war and becoming a kingdom i mean uh, there's the swings and roundabouts i mean becoming a kingdom was definitely better than staying as a tribe but at the same time, losing, you know, 4k from our main army is, is never, never nice. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at fighting these guys. If we have an issue with them, what we're going to do is just get some extra guys. What is wrong with you? Low manpower. If we can just improve our opinion a little bit with these guys, we should be able to uh, bring them in. Only literally nine to do that. So uh, let's see. Will they come in now? They will. Okay, yeah, we'll bring them in to the war. Well, here we go, guys. We are basically at war with the whole of this area. So that's going to be quite interesting, uh, shall we say. So, yeah, we might have to get some mercs here. We do have a merc company right there, which is pretty good. It's going to cost us a lot of money to do that, though, but let's see. Okay, we're getting tested out by an army to start with. I think we will lose this, but, um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just retreat. We can't retreat because of our goddamn thing. Can we retreat? Yeah, we can. Okay. We'll just chill out for a little bit and wait until Pictonia gets across. I do want to build some roads at some point. It, is, it does take a lot of a lot of time to get across this wooded territory. And there goes our first uh, mission. We get minus 5% war score cost, but minus 4 Diplo rep. Not a, not a great amount of Diplo rep then, is it? And I missed that battle. Great. We are still doing quite well up here, though. But I do think mercs are going to be necessary. Well, we've taken the war goal pretty much straight away. I'm wondering whether it's worth going after these guys here. Or worth going after these guys. They're on 0%. I might wait for some reinforcements. Problem is, because this fort doesn't cover there, they can just kind of walk in these lands. And because we've only got forts on our borders now... <laughs> They can just walk wherever they want, really, which is a little bit annoying. We might have to just have a scrap here. Just, just, just calm down a second, guys. Can we escape that? No. I maybe we'll be able to uh, to join that. If not, that's fine. We'll get our. Okay, we're gonna win that. That's. I think we're gonna win. We're definitely gonna win if these guys get in. There we go. Nice. Well, I think we just gotta take this battle. It looks like we're gonna win anyway. Probably just because of our tech. But there we go. We are losing. It said we were going to win. I feel like it's wrong most of the time. <laughs> but um, I think we hit them back to back and we will win. So if we go with this guy now, with the mercs, I think we'll win. There we go. Look at that. Very nice. Yep, yep. Keep on going, boys. Keep on going. So a bit of a stupid thing to do. But, ah, you know. It pushes them back, doesn't it? And for some reason now, we have lost control of the mercs. They're just kind of just doing their own thing. Um, even though they're loyal and we're still paying them. I I, I really don't know what's going on here. Like, wh what is this? Wait, now do we have control over them? No, I've not set them on any objectives or anything like that. Apparently they just want to go. Both of these guys are loyal. 
I can't do anything with them. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's very strange. At this point, they're just bashing men into our lines. We have killed a lot of men in every single battle. So um, that is uh, pretty good. But yeah. Oh, we got another advance. Nice, 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 nice. Um, like I said, we're going to go towards graduated citizenship. Did I say that? I don't know whether I did. We're going to go towards graduated citizenship. Pop promotion speed plus 20%. So that means we're going to get more citizens a lot quicker. And then more nobles, of course, if they are of our culture. Well, they are pretty scared of us now. They don't even want to engage us in, like, any combat at all. So, I mean, that's quite good for us. It's just annoying that we can't actually control half of our troops, even though they are loyal and I have money to pay them. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> am I just being dumb? Please just tell me in the comments. Like, am I being dumb? Probably, probably, it's probably me being dumb, isn't it? I've got to say, though, at least they're doing some good things. They're, they're actually using the troops pretty well, so... <laughs> I'm not... I don't need to complain too much. Um, uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's just quite funny, really. <laughs> Hopefully they go and uh, relieve that siege. And this is kind of generally a bit of a siege race. We are winning the siege race, though, but with that extra 10% siege ability. It is really, really helping. God damn, they, they just took this just after we were about to get there. And now we're going to fight as well. And hopefully we win this. This is going to be quite close, I think. We've got 100% discipline. No, we've got 118%. Yeah, I mean... Uh, can you compete with that, guys? Probably not. And they only have 150 men here, so... We'll take a couple of ticks and then we'll assault. There we go. Let's Let's try that. There we go. Instant win, basically. We didn't even lose many men for it. Very nice. And the Merc seems to just be stack wiping everyone, which is pretty good. I do want to go for 100% and just take all this land. I, I know it's not necessary, but more land for the boys, shall we say. More meat on the barbie. Well, unfortunately, we got call for peace, so we do need to peace out now. So, yeah, we're just going to take everything that we can. Very nice indeed. Literally only uh, 15 um, aggressive expansion for that. That is brilliant. That also brings us across this river, so it's not going to be so hard from now on to get across the river. We've got plenty of influence. We are ready to go. And it'd be nice to form Gaul at some point, wouldn't it, guys? But I think we shall leave it there for today, guys. So, if you have enjoyed this Belgier campaign, less warfare, sort of more building up, which I quite like, honestly. Let me know if you like that down in the comments below. Uh, make sure you do like and subscribe, guys. If we get to 250 likes on this video, we'll do a part two where we try to unite most of Gaul, or at least all of Northern Gaul as well, which would be really, really fun. Um, and a big thank you once again to the channel members, Pascal, David D, and Zero. Thank you very much for being channel members. If you are interested, there's a link down in the description below. But without further ado, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you all again on the next video.